works for me. We can always edit out the uh, part where we're all staring at the screen together. <laughs> Should we wait a couple minutes or are we yeah, looking why don't good? We, why don't we give it, you know, one or two more minutes and then get rolling. I know it's late and we appreciate folks' time. So, um, yeah, I don't want to keep you all too late. All right. Well, it looks like we just had a handful of people just roll in. Um, I think if we want to get started with the introduction and then go right into it, I think we're ready to do it. Sounds good. Um, I guess I'll uh, take it for a minute here and just introduce uh, our citizen science projects. And I guess, first of all, just thanks so much for everybody attending the training this evening and for your interest. Um, this is the first citizen science project we have going this for the season. And uh, we have a great lineup coming up. This is a brand brand new project that we're doing. Um, but we're also uh, look for information coming down the line. Um, well, I guess we did a little climate watch surveys earlier in January, but um, we're doing four citizen science projects this year. And uh, so you can look on our Montana Audubon citizen science uh, on our website under citizen science and find information about those. They include uh, climate watch surveys. Um, we had one in January to February 15th and there's an upcoming uh, more climate watch surveys, May 15th to Ju June 15th. And then we've got our screech owl survey, which we're going to learn about tonight. Long build curlew surveys start in in there there in April and May, and we have chimney swifts uh, surveys in June and July. And I guess I should introduce myself. Uh, my name is Christian Many, and I'm the director of conservation at Montana Audubon. And giving our training tonight is our Big Sky Watershed core member, Gwyn Road. Um, she just started with us about a month and a half ago, and she has spearheaded this project and is also uh, sort of refining and uh, facilitating all of our citizen science projects. So I guess without further ado, I'll let uh, Gwen take it from here uh, regarding screech owl winter surveys. Hello, thank you all for joining us today for the Screech Owl Citizen Science Training. My name is Gwen Rohde and I'm a Big Sky Watershed Corps member here in Montana Audubon. This survey focuses on collecting a count of Eastern and Western Screech Owls, two species listed as potential species of concern in Montana, and the Western Screech Owls also listed as a Montana species of highest inventory need. The last survey of these owls occurred in 2014 and included 12 owl species in Montana, 
The timing of this survey is aligned with the screech owl breeding season, which is goes from late February to May. And this makes this a critical time for surveying the species to gain insight on the status of this population. In this presentation, I will discuss four broad topics, a brief discussion of Western and Eastern screech owls, including their ecology and identification, the state of each species in Montana today, how to conduct this survey, and then we're gonna end with how to work survey one, two, three, and some survey tips. And a bit about who I am, my name is Gwen Rohde, and I'm currently serving with Montana Audubon through the Big Sky Watershed Corps program. There are over 30 Big Sky Watershed Corps members around the state serving with organizations that impact Montana's watersheds. And also all of the topics that are being covered during this presentation can be found on our website, including a recording of this training. So to start off, here's the ecology and identification of the Western screech owl. This species has the genus name originating from the Greek roots mega and scops, mega meaning large or great and scops meaning an owl. The mega scops genus contains all 24 of screech owls species, sorry. Okay. And they were originally a part of the genus Otis or the old world scops owls, but was categorized separately to due to differences in morphology, DNA behavior and biogeography. The species name Kennecotti comes from the last name of naturalist Robert Kennecott, and despite the common name of screech, the owls rarely make a screeching sound, with the most common call being a typical hoot, and the breeding call is a high-pitched trill. So moving on to the eastern screech owl, they are closely related and belong to the same megascops family, but the species name Eseu translates from Latin to a horned owl referring to the owl's ear tufts. So the screech owl genus contains small owls ranging from seven to 10 inches with a wingspan of 18 to 24 inches. They have a high variability in coloration, but are usually gray, brown, or reddish brown. Screech owls have ear tufts that assist in daytime camouflage. They actually have no correlation to their hearing and the owl's ears are located along the upper perimeter of the owl's facial disc located separately from the ear tufts. And screech owls detect their prey by sound, and one of their ears is located higher on the head than the other one, so then they have a better sense of where the sound is located. And some fun facts about screech owls is that they can actually fly silently due to fringes in their feathers that break up the airflow, and this helps them catch prey. And their prey is a pretty diverse diet, and, some hunt, and they hunt by sitting in a tree and waiting for something to walk by which they detect by sound, and their diet mainly consists of rodents, insects, and frogs. So some differences between the western and eastern screech owl, they're nearly identical, but they can be differentiated by their vocal calls, which will be the main difference in this survey because it's a auditory survey for the most part. But physically, the western screech owl has a darker beak, and it's usually brownish blackish, and they also have narrower bars on their breasts. And Eastern screech owl's beak usually varies between yellow green and yellow white, and they have wider bars on their breasts. And their ranges are actually their primary difference where Western screech owl is on the Western half of Montana and then Eastern screech owls on the Eastern half of Montana. But one interesting thing about being in the state is that their ranges kind of collide of along the Missouri River. So if you're doing surveys along there, then you'll have to make sure to differentiate between both of them. Within their ranges, both screech owls have similar habitats and primarily reside in riparian floodplains, cottonwood groves, and conifer forests. And they also live along edges of wetlands and forests. Within their habitat, screech owls depend on old growth and natural cavities for nesting. And both species are potential species of concerns with Western screech owl also being on the species of greatest inventory need list in Montana. These pictures provide examples of what you might see ne their nesting sites look like. As you can see, the screech owls also camouflage into the tree during the daytime. And although the screech owls cannot survive without trees, they have been known to utilize nest box installed in suburban areas. And the main reason that they're considered species of concern is due to a loss of old growth trees in riparian areas to human development. So this is a map of the Western screech owls range. As you could see, it primarily stays on the Western um, half of Montana. And this is 
a non-migratory bird. And this map shows the general range of Western screech owls within Montana. As you can see by the purple, there have been some observed Western screech owls as far east of Great Falls and Helena. This map was created by eBird, a citizen science driven organization where birders can track the birds that they see at a location. All of the observational data found by birders is open access to the public, which allows data driven approaches to conservation. And this is the range of the eastern screech owl. This species resides along the eastern and central part of the US with territories in the eastern half of Montana. This is a map of eastern screech owls observed in Montana. Although these species primarily reside in the eastern side of the state, there have been observations of the species on the western half of the state near Flathead National Forest and past Great Falls. And the last map contains the relative density of western screech owls observed in Montana. This map shows about one to three observations within an area. This map on the right shows the recency of when the owls were observed, where most of these owls were observed from zero to five years ago. And similar to the last slide, these maps depict the relative density of eastern screech owls on the left and the recency of the species observation on the right. As you can see, the general range of these observations occurs on the eastern and central part of the state. And there are more observations of eastern screech owls than western screech owls. Both species have a common observation range of zero to five years and an average of one to three owls per observed site. And here's where you come in. So why should we conduct a survey of these owls and why do so with citizen science? The last Montana winter breeding owl survey took place in 2014, which included 12 owl species listed on the Montana Species of Highest Inventory Need list. Presently, four species still remain on this list, and the near future is the perfect time to survey for the western and eastern screech owls due to their upcoming breeding season. The current status of both western and eastern screech owls as a potential species of concern also increased the need for survey data and determined potential conservation action. The increase in infrastructure in the last decade and the lack of recent surveys that make the species one that is very valuable to learn the population of in order to assess needs for conservation. Citizen science is extremely valuable in studies like this one because it allows researchers and land managers to receive more data on where, when, and how many species and animals are in specific locations. Answering these questions allow for conservation and land management decisions based in scientific research. So this survey will take place from March 1st to April 30th. And the reason why we're doing it so early in the year is because it coincides with the screech owl breeding season, which starts in like late February and ends in May. And the surveys are most effective during the beginning because that is when the pairs start to form. So playback calls receive more response from owls looking to defend their territory and attract mates. So for the general protocol overview, this survey, you will visit 10 sites decided by you, and each site must be one mile apart on public land. So if a road travels back on itself, then that does not count as one mile apart because it has to be one mile from one place to the next. And the survey time frame for this starts 30 minutes after the sunset to 30 minutes before sunrise. And in total, this survey should take about an hour and a half to complete. And as for the required materials, you can do this survey with just your smartphone, as long as you have Survey123 downloaded, the playback call downloaded, a GPS app, a thermometer, and a compass app. For site-specific protocol, so when you arrive at your sites, make sure that you prioritize your and others' safety by parking in a safe place away from traffic. And you don't have to walk far for this survey. So if it's possible to stand safely near a road, near a tree line, or near repairing areas, and once you pick a specific spot, you're going to need to record your latitude and longitude. And one point for this is that the survey is going to happen during the when it's dark out. So make sure that wherever you go is easily accessible and keep in mind your own safety. And when downloading the playback call sound file, um, it's a little tricky, but it's on our resources our Screech Owl Resources webpage. And when you click on the playback call link on your smartphone, it will open up the sound file. And if you download the file using the share and save the file so that you can use it without service, because depending on where you survey at, you may or may not have um, cellular service. The playback call includes both species calls with established periods of silence. And they have um, the silence met for silent listening during the survey so then you rec can record your observations. 
and only play the recording once per site on your smartphone at, smartphone at full volume with the speaker and facing the habitat so then it reaches more area. And optionally, you could use a spotlight to spotlight areas that you think could have owls potentially there. So when recording your observations, um, one big thing to clarify with the survey is that it'll be rare to actually see an owl since this is a nighttime survey and owls are very discrete animals. To accurately get data, please make sure that you review the Xenocanto links of each of the species calls and songs. These are listed on the Screech Owl training webpage. This is especially important if you're surveying along the intersecting parts of their ranges, which is mainly the Missouri River. And if you're surveying with other people, it may be helpful for one person to be playing the playback call on their phone, and then another person with the Merlin app open, ready for to hear any calls that you may be unfamiliar with. And Merlin is a very useful tool for identifying any bird calls that you don't know. So make sure to check it out if you're pretty new to birding. And I know that we have some new faces here. So um, yeah, and then real quick, I'm going to play each calls just for reference. And these are also on their training page. So here's the Western Screech Owl. Okay, sorry about the background noise on that one, but uh, moving on to the Eastern Screech Owl. It, it didn't oh, no, quite okay. come through on our end. Yeah. What? All right. Oh, uh, it just didn't quite come through on our end. I think okay. we might. Okay, um, well, the links for both of these sounds are listed under the training resources page if you would like to review them. So I'll just move on. So one thing to make clear is the callback ethics. And if you choose to use callbacks during the survey, um, the survey uses playback calls of our target species to evoke a vocal response from any owls within a hearing distance of the callback station. And what playback calls are is that they're essentially a recorded version of an owl call, and then they'll play that to like get a response from any residential owls in the territory. And the use of playback calls during bird surveys can raise some ethical concerns. So I'm just gonna go over some pros, cons, and takeaways for using playback calls. So some pros are it reduces the need to enter a bird's habitat and it targets a single species without disturbing the other species in the same habitat. And along with that, it in some cases, territorial males can um, ward off the fake intruder and or the playback call. And they'll actually come out of it with a higher social standing. And then playback calls attract birds into view and hearing distance that are otherwise difficult to see or hear. And some cons with playback calls is that aggressive playback calls or playing it over and over again in a very high volume can cause other birds to view the target male as the loser of a rival and they may lose social standing. And this was actually found from a study done on mountain chickadees. And then this also causes unnatural stress on the birds. It's kind of like if a person were to go outside your house and then yell that they're about to break in. So you would be very stressed out in that situation and that's kind of what the birds feel like. And this interrupts other birders experience and some birders even feel that using playback calls is cheating to view birds that they would otherwise not be in sight or hearing distance. So overall, not enough research has been done to prove the to prove whether and how bad it is. And it's always nice just to have respect for the birds and play callbacks at a lower volume than what the birds call back at and don't play the recording continuously. So this is our map of all the survey sites. The map was made by the Montana Heritage Program. And then the seven regions were identified by the Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks. And then all of these squares are called quarter lat longs, and they are pretty much just how the state is split up in by the decimals. 
So one important note for this is that we can only conduct these surveys on public land. So any private or tribal land is off limits. And you might see when going to claim a site that a lot of these sites are taken off the website or it'll say to email us. And we want you to email us if you're interested in one of these sites, just to make sure that your route and all the stops that you're gonna take are going to stay on public land. So to actually claim a site, um, you can go to our Screech Owl Survey Sites page and look for your region. And underneath the regions, there are a list of sites. And then the taken ones are indicated by three asterisks. So if there are no asterisks next to the site number, then it's open. And if it says to email us, then you'll just have to email us and we'll get back to you. But then every site listed in the region is actually a link to a PDF to that specific site. And within that site, you're gonna see the green and red um, markings like this one. And the red is indicated the moderate suitability for owl habitat. And then green is the best habitat that an owl can be in. And then this also has the road systems on it. So then you could plan the stops that you wanna take better. And then to actually claim your site, there's a Google form. So after looking through all of your region sites and deciding which one that you wanna do, you can just go to the Google form and it'll ask you to put in your first, second and third priority site. And then after that, we will email you which site that you got and it solely depends on first come first serve. So moving on to survey one, two, three, um, we have two collection options for data. And the first one is the Survey123 app. And this is an app that you can just use on your phone. And it was also made by the Montana Heritage Program in the Montana Fish and Wildlife and Parks. And there's a user guide on how to download the survey and the app on our website if you want to revisit any of this. So once you have Survey123 downloaded, and it's a free app and you don't have to sign in, um, some important notes for this is that you can just fill out all of your data and you have to submit one form for each survey site that you do. And since we have 10 survey sites within each survey, then you're going to have 10 complete forms at the end of this. And when you're filling out the survey, it'll ask you what the survey protocol that you're doing. And this is the winter breeding owls. And the survey type is call playback unless you choose to just do passive listening. And in that case, you could just put passive listening. And then one huge perk to using this app instead of the data sheet is the location tracker. So if you're filling out the data sheet, then you'll have to find a way to get your exact latitude and longitude. But on survey one, two, three, there's actually the magnifying icon right next to the location of stop. And what if you click that, then it'll just write down your exact location. And then the data sheet is one that's pictured here. You could download it from our website as well. And if you want to use the data sheet, then you have to remember to print it out and then email us either a photo of it, or if you want to email us a hard copy, our mailing address is listed on the resources page. And then for the survey, it's very important that you email us a copy of your citizen science waiver. And this QR code goes to a PDF of that. And you can either email us a copy or you can um, mail us a hard copy of it. And the email address is right here. And then our actual address is right here. So some overall survey tips and safety is to stay on public and easily accessible land. And if possible, drive along your planned route during the day to become familiar with it. And you could use this in your QLL map to plan good stops with good habitat and safe stopping points. And just make sure to tell someone where you're at, when you're going, and when you plan on returning. And some more survey tips and safety is ensure that you have proper gear, a smartphone for playback and audio recording, GPS. And the protocol sheet on our website goes more into detail about the materials required for the survey. So it's best to go back and review the document before going out and doing the survey. Keep in mind that you will need a device slash phone to play the playback calls and record any calls that you can't identify. The Merlin app is a great app for identifying birds and to be aware of traffic around you. When stopping to conduct surveys, make sure to park in a safe spot that doesn't interrupt the flow of traffic or jeopardize your own safety or other safety. And always make sure to check the weather conditions before going out for this survey. 
Please don't conduct this survey if it's raining, snowing, extremely cold, or have high winds. Okay, any questions? Yeah, I have maybe one or several, but anyway, you're you're looking for just one person per per sec uh, per segment or per uh, you know each of your sites, or is are, are there opportunities for maybe having more than one individual doing an area? Yeah, so we are looking for one person, or if you want to work together with any other person on a specific site then we're looking for that because we don't want to make a playback call play continuously to the same birds and then them getting stressed out. Um, but we can always work together if a lot of people want similar sites or if in, they're in the same areas because there's room to do more than one route in one site. So you can always email us if you want a specific route or a specific site that you want to do. And I guess another thought that comes to mind, a, a, a lot of the, I'm from Helena, and, and a lot of the areas where you might expect to find at least uh, eastern screech owls are, are pretty discontinuous. And so I think it's going to be difficult to find a whole lot of areas, or very many at all, that have like a continuous 10-mile uh, route uh, of potential habitat. Now, maybe that's okay, but uh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's been a concern. You know, it's not kind of in the same vein. We were thinking, you know, sure there may be enough suitable habitat in one QLL, but to ensure that folks aren't hitting the same ten mile stretch, that's why we were hoping to spread it out. Um, I think I'm not as familiar with the local screech owl habitat as you, but um, you know, maybe if if we can't find ten points that are one mile apart, we can work with that. It's still important to gather that data. Um, particularly in our area um, and how it relates to threats to the species. So, um, yeah, I think we'd, we'd be willing to work on something like that. If it, if it doesn't work out quite to 10, this is still a, pri a pilot project. Yeah. So we're trying to get as much data as we can that can be helpful. So, yeah, yeah still... my, my thought is uh, it doesn't have to be one mile increments apart. It could just be, it has to be at least 10 miles from the last site. So if you pick a QLL, you sign up for that, and then you look for the habitat, um, I think that you could pick moderate to use the suitability, the green and red, you know, to kind of pick sites, but just make sure they're not within a mile of each other. Yeah, and I, you know, I just did, I did a little bit of preliminary kind of looking on eBird and, 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 and whatever, and, and one of the interesting sites that came to mind and i see beth hill is on here i think but anyway uh, uh up on the bear tooth the wildlife management area uh and i don't remember how many years i think it was quite a few years ago but somebody identified uh, both easterns and westerns there and the problem with that is, is that that area doesn't open until the 15th of may and so it's outside of your uh, outside of your time frames but it's you know, I think along the uh, the creek as you come in there, uh, you know, up to the main cabin and so forth, looks like pretty good habitat, and uh, uh, kind of be nice to have that as a, as an option. Uh, and I I'm guessing that uh, at least if road conditions are okay, that FWP would be okay with uh, uh, with allowing some access, limited access in there. I mean, I. Oh, maybe I <laughs> maybe I shouldn't say this. I have some some keys from when I worked there 25 years ago that still work in a lot of those gates, and <laughs> so uh, well, uh, maybe maybe I can work <laughs> on that individually. <laughs> I, I don't think we can condone that, Bob. But you, <laughs> if you want to use your connections, <laughs> I want to risk it. <laughs> so I have a question. Um, you mentioned the time frame is from March 1st to April 30th. What if I'm not around that entire time? Like is, is one month's data valuable or you would rather have somebody be around the whole time period? Oh, you can only, well, you only have to go out once during that entire time. So if you're only free for like a day during that, then that's fine. You don't have to go out every day. Perfect. Yeah, I was wondering if it'd be helpful Gwen, if you wouldn't mind, could I share my screen and just show these everybody the citizen science website?
quickly. Yeah, go ahead. Let me try to pull it up here. So can folks see my screen right now? Yes. It's just a Google, so, or, you know, Google uh, query here. So I would just go into Montana Audubon Citizen Science, click on Citizen Science. This is the route I would take. You still see what I'm seeing here. Um, then on our site here, it shows the current Citizen Science projects that I discussed early on. Um, and under that, we've got our Screech Owl um, Citizen Science Project. You press learn more. Oops, well, okay. And then, so this was, if you guys can still see my screen, this was the sign up for our training this evening. And then you go to Screech Owl Survey Info. And you, there's, here's where all your materials live. Um, so we need everybody to fill out the volunteer form on the right here and submit that to Gwyn before you do any surveying. And then on the left here, we've got about screech owls. It's got the uh, calls of in some uh, oh biology on each species. If you need help with some identification, you're really going to be listening for these birds, uh, that's the best way to tell an Eastern and Western apart. And then most importantly, probably is the survey resources. So when you go in here, there's a couple of things, important things. Um, regarding data collection, Gwen mentioned, you can either do a hard data sheet, which is you find under data sheet, which is just you print it out and you write down your observations and then you either take a picture, or however you want to submit it, when via email, or you can download the survey one, two, three, and this has a very useful tutorial. Here's the call, the playback call of the screech owl, and you can save that onto your phone or whatever device you're going to play um, your, your call playback on. Also, we've got, we'll have the training downloaded here that you can rewatch if you want. You probably won't need to. Survey site sign up is here. So as Gwen said, the whole state's broken into this grid and each one of these squares is called a QLL. And let's see, how do you sign up for those? <laughs> oh, claim a site. So you go on this and you, you look over that grid and you decide which, which QLL, your top three picks. And you would email, you put your email, your name, a bunch of this information in and you submit it. And then I, I guess we'll when we get back to them on what their site is or I, how will that work? So once I get their responses, I'll email them back with what site that they have. Okay. Perfect. And uh, so that's how you claim a site. So you'll know which QLL you're in. And I wonder, are any of the uh, specific QLL maps in here? If you yeah, click on any of those numbers, yeah, you'll it'll show you the map. If you click on any of those sites, Christian, uh, in the list. Oh, yeah. OK. Let's see. I'm just going <laughs> to randomly click on one. So say you sign up for 25D. This would be, and it gets back to you, and this is the one that you have signed up for. Then this, look at all this optimal habitat down in the bitter root here. And you basically pick wherever you want to start uh, your surveys. And my idea, and correct me if my, I'm wrong, but I think you plan to do 10 surveys in a night, no closer than a mile, but they don't have to be one mile apart from each other. So you could... Anywhere you have access, as long as they're not a mile in proximity to one another, you can kind of take whatever route you want and do 10 surveys within this QLL. And uh, let me just back out again. Yeah. And then here's the protocol. And 
it just talks about the materials and the equipment that you might need. Some are required, more required, and some are beneficial, but not required. The timing for the surveys, some safety tips. This is our call playback, what it consists of. And then the data that you record is listed here. And I'll just quickly show you a data sheet too, just to get an idea of the data that you'd be recording. So you put your QLL in, you put your name and initials or whatever, however you want to be known, <laughs> your alias, date time, whether you use callbacks, a lat long, temperature, the rain scale, wind scale. I think where is all that listed in the protocol? Probably the scale of zero to four or rain or wind or cloud cover, ambient noise, how many owls you would detect. Um, you can estimate the distance to them, detection method, whether visual or by ear, and then habitat comp comments, like am I in a cottonwood gallery or on the edge of a forest? I don't know. Anyways, that's... I just wanted to show you our our site. Um, I also want to say, yeah, any any feedback that you all have um, from your experience with this, please let us know. You know, Heritage, you know, they said they would love for this to be for all owl species. Um, so if you get any incidental species out there, please make note of that. Um, they would love any of that data. This is kind of a, a proof of concept of how getting citizen scientists out looking for owls could work in the state. And um, yeah, we're just trying to make this smoother and more efficient and, and collect good data. So any feedback, any data is good, um, but please, please reach out. Yeah. Yeah. And here's Gwen's uh, email. You can of course find it on the site, but that's your contact for uh, these citizen science projects. And I think, so any more questions? Christian, I, I had one. Do you think if, you know, if everyone goes out in the first week and surveys their site, do you think there's opportunity to do another survey potentially at the end of the survey period? Would that be useful? Because it probably wouldn't be invasive. On the same uh, QLL, you mean? Yeah, somewhere in the same area. Yeah, I mean, I think that would probably be okay. We, we haven't really, we should probably write something about that in our protocol and kind of make a decision about that. Right now, we're trying to make sure we don't overwhelm the owls, you know, so that's why we had sort of a QLL sign up. Um, so maybe we'll think about that and we'll put it into the protocol and you folks can re reference that. Um, yeah. Well, if there's no more questions, I guess we'll we'll let, let everybody get going for the evening. Um, I really wanna thank everybody for attending this evening and for your interest. And I'm really excited myself to get out there after some screech owls. Um, I wanna thank Gwyn, uh, especially for putting all this together, all this information and Peter, those guys have done a great job putting the site together and the training. And uh, yeah, so hopefully we get out there and we turn up a bunch of screech owls across the state. <laughs>